Have you ever bought a game and been really excited to play it, only to realize you wasted your money on a pay-to-win piece of trash? <laughs> well, you have Fortnite to thank for that. Why that is? Well, the answer is a little more complex. Let's take a trip back to the summer of 2016. Stranger Things released and took over the world for a week. Pokemon Go became so popular that it actually made people go outside. Usain Bolt won his last gold medals at the Rio Olympics and a rich businessman was making waves for his presidential campaign. I'm sure that one didn't cause any long-lasting issues. <laughs> Anyways, 2016 also marked the release of Overwatch, one of the most hyped games ever made from one of the most well-known and iconic game developers. And it was a hit. Smooth gameplay, amazing graphics, and a thriving esports scene. There was just one problem. No, don't do it! Loot boxes. Hi. Now, microtransactions were nothing new to gaming. Whether it was buying gems in Clash of Clans, supply drops in Call of Duty, or throwing money down the drain on CSGO cases. Oh! Ah! Oh, 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 However, Overwatch took it to a new level, since loot boxes were the only way to get skins and cosmetics. Let's say you wanted to buy a cool outfit or gun camo for your character. Oops, sorry, gotta get it from a loot box. This made Blizzard a lot of money, like a billion dollars a year kind of money. But the success came with a price. Fans of the game were outraged, so much so that the government actually started passing laws to ban loot boxes from being in future games. And for a while, it seemed to work. Flash forward to 2017, and a new battle royale game known as Fortnite was on the rise. Fortnite was unique, fun, and completely free, so its player base quickly started to rise. The game was filled with fun emotes and skins you could unlock just by playing and gaining XP. To cash in on their newfound audience, Epic Games released the Battle Pass, filled with brand new stickers, emotes, skins, and V-Bucks, their in-game currency you could use to buy anything you wanted in their daily refreshing shop. Unlike loot boxes, the Battle Pass gave you all the cool items and dances you could ever ask for, all for only 10 bucks. I mean, what could go wrong? <laughs> Fortnite was originally a PvE game known as Save the World and was released as early access on July 26, 2017. It was made by Epic Games, best known for making the Unreal Engine, which was used to make many popular games like the Batman Arkham series, Borderlands, and Bioshock. Save the World was a fun survival game with a completely destructible map and a cool building feature that players seemed to enjoy. Despite its well-received gameplay, replayability, and great reviews, Save the World's $40 price tag was steep enough to limit its success. But Epic Games had a plan. They noticed the huge success of battle royale games like H1Z1 and PUBG and decided to make their own. Fortnite Battle Royale was officially released on September 26, 2017. This new PvP mode had a lot going for it. The game was completely free, meaning anyone was able to pick it up and play with their friends. The gameplay was also very smooth and fun, with arcade-style graphics and shiny loot that was more colorful the rarer it was. I found a scar. Guys, I'm extremely hyped right now. Yay. Fortnite also received frequent weekly updates, adding many new features like guns, map locations, and seasonal events. Fortnite quickly started gaining traction, especially on Twitch, where a few big names were just starting to make their mark. Oh, man. <laughs> you guys wanna see the best RPG snipe of all time? Season one began a month later on October 26th, and introduced two new features that changed the game forever, the item shop and V-Bucks. The item shop refreshed daily and gave players access to any brand new skins or emotes that Epic Games added. Their in-game currency, V-Bucks, allowed you to purchase these skins to use them in-game. Season one also introduced an XP progression system, where you were able to gain V-Bucks from playing the game and use them to buy these rewards. This system was perfect, as it allowed anyone to spend money to buy the items they wanted, but still encouraged players to grind the game as much as possible, so they could get the skins for free. Fortnite became the fastest growing game in the world, 
with an estimated 30 million players by the end of 2017, and it didn't stop there. Season 2 was released on December 13th, and expanded on Epic Games' money train even further. The newest and most important feature added was the Battle Pass, which would change the way microtransactions were sold forever. For just 950 V-Bucks, the Battle Pass gave you an exclusive collection of free rewards and challenges only available to those who purchased it. These challenges appeared weekly, and gave you stars which you could use to progress through the 70 unlockable tiers. Buying the Battle Pass gave you access to $100 worth of exclusive items, all for just $10. For the lazy players who didn't want to grind the challenges, you could just buy each tier in the Battle Pass for 150 V-Bucks. Keeping the items in the Battle Pass exclusive was a genius decision. Its value made it desirable for your average player, but still let the high-spending consumer to buy any rare skins in the item shop. The Battle Pass also introduced a seasonal theme that would continue for each Battle Pass after it. By completing all your challenges and reaching Tier 70, you would unlock the Black Knight, a legendary outfit that became the first iconic skin in Fortnite. Exclusive Battle Pass skins like the Black Knight or Jon Snow what? You are my pussy. <laughs> skins became status symbols, since they were associated with highly skilled players who either spent a lot of money or grinded the game all the time. Seeing people with exclusive skins like these encouraged other players to buy the Battle Pass and get it for themselves. The weekly updates adding brand new skins and dances to the shop made Fortnite even more money, thanks in part to the biggest Twitch streamers. All the top streamers like Ninja, Tifu, and Myth would spend thousands of dollars buying the newest cool skins and items added in the shop. Their young, impressionable fans would see them with the new skin dropping 20 bombs on a bunch of 12-year-olds, and they'd immediately go and buy the skin to try and do the same thing. This cycle of consistent updates and new content along with an unlimited supply of new players made Fortnite the highest grossing game of all time, generating almost $5 billion a year on just microtransactions, which is fucking insane. In the span of six months, Fortnite became the most popular game of all time. Its battle pass and constant updates was the perfect money printing machine its success has never been replicated to this day, but that didn't stop literally every single gaming developer from trying. You better stop! Stop! Loud. Loud. The battle royale genre was at its peak in 2018, with PUBG and Fortnite at all-time high player counts. This success caused a ripple effect through the gaming industry, as companies scrambled to cash in on the success of the genre. The first game to ride this wave was Realm Royale, a spin-off of the hero shooter Paladins. Realm Royale was just a worse version of Fortnite in every way. Worse graphics, worse gameplay, worse cosmetics, but ooh, look at this battle pass. This game was not good. The developers just paid a bunch of Fortnite YouTubers and streamers to play the game and milk their young audience out of millions of dollars. At its peak, it reached 100,000 concurrent players, but lost its entire player base in just two months. The first major studio to fall victim to the Battle Royale craze was Activision, and the release of Black Ops 4. Call of Duty was known for their legendary campaigns, like Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops 1, but after seeing the success of Fortnite, Activision completely scrapped the game mode and forced Treyarch to put together a Battle Royale in just six months, known as Blackout. The game was mired by bugs and glitches, the servers were awful and crashed constantly, and the gameplay felt very sluggish and boring. Couple that with a $60 price tag, and there was really no reason to play it. The battle pass in this game was also terrible. The skins and emotes in it were underwhelming, and they locked all the new overpowered guns in it, making the game essentially pay to win. Blackout was made with the sole intention of making money from microtransactions. There was no thought or love put into the game. They just stuffed as much nostalgia and shiny skins as possible behind a paywall in hopes of people buying it. Black Ops 4 ranks as the lowest rated Call of Duty of all time, and most of that blame can be put on its shitty battle royale. Even CSGO, a legendary franchise that's been popular for over 20 years, dipped their greedy little toes into the battle royale genre with Danger Zone. This mode sucked. The gameplay was boring, and it was honestly just a big waste of development time. Not like, you know, 
Valve spends any time on the game anyways. <laughs> Fortunately, not all the Battle Royale games were bad. Take Apex Legends, for example. Released in early 2019, Apex Legends took shades of Fortnite, Titanfall, and Overwatch to create a unique Battle Royale experience with advanced movement, various heroes to play with, and great graphics and gameplay. As per usual, the game had a battle pass, an item shop, and loot boxes, creating the microtransaction Triforce of pure greed. But the rewards were pretty good and the challenges were fun to complete. And since the game was well made, less people seemed to care. Apex is still going strong today, increasing its player base to around 350,000 monthly players. The success of the genre continued into 2020 with the release of Call of Duty Warzone. Warzone was the biggest game of the year and actually surpassed Fortnite in active players for a short time. The original Warzone was a massive hit, released right at the start of the COVID pandemic. The gameplay was smooth and fast paced. The Gulag was a really cool new feature to give players a shot at redemption. And the game received constant updates, adding new guns, map locations, and limited time modes like Rebirth Island. 2020 was a great year for the Battle Royale genre, as there were more options than ever to choose from. So why, four years later, are these games still topping the play count charts, even though most people hate them? Dude, uh, this game sucks. Since the overwhelming success of Fortnite and its microtransaction hellhole, game developers have given up on making fun and quality multiplayer experiences, continuously disappointing fans with new releases time and time again. The two exceptions to this would probably be Fall Guys and Valorant, but one is a party game made for kids and the other charges $100 for one skin bundle. Yeah! Plus it's made by Riot Games, so, you know. Ah! Don't worry though. Both of them still have a battle pass you can throw your money at. It's kind of insane how many AAA games have one now. Rainbow Six Siege, Battle Pass. Halo, Battle Pass. Fortnite, Call of Duty, Apex Legends, Genshin Impact, Valorant, Fall Guys, Diablo 4, Rocket League. All of these games have a battle pass or a battle pass equivalent. Even Overwatch, the game that got microtransactions banned in some countries, introduced a battle pass for its sequel Overwatch 2. And it was so bad that people were asking for loot boxes back. <laughs> bro, please, bro, why are you do- The rewards were awful. The new characters they released were locked behind a paywall for a month. And there was no way to buy skins in the shop unless you paid money for them. It was truly a full circle moment that made people realize just how greedy and self-serving the gaming industry had gotten. And this isn't going anywhere because this cheesy tactic still works. Developers are making billions of dollars by doing absolutely nothing. So there's no need to update their game or spend time making new ones since they can just keep milking the infinite supply of 12 year old kids who want all the shiny new skins in every game right away. That's why the battle royale genre continues to thrive. It's not that the games are good anymore. It's just that people got so addicted to the constant grind for new skins and emotes that even if they hate the game, they'll still come back and play it to get the newly released operator or weapon camo. So what happened to Fortnite? Well, a once beloved game by hundreds of millions of people has devolved into a glorified advertisement campaign for whatever pop culture topic is relevant at that time. Fortnite has always done collabs and crossovers since its release, with limited time modes like Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet or events like the Travis Scott concert. But nowadays, the only big updates happening to the game are to promote the release of a new skin set from your favorite movies and TV shows, like the Jujutsu Kaisen bundle, the Star Wars collab, or most recently, the Avatar collab. I'm not saying that these skins aren't cool, but they're wildly overpriced and only exist to profit off of young kids. There's been a clear shift in what's important to not only Epic Games, but the entire video game industry. It's all about making as much money as possible with as little effort or care as possible. Loud. Loud. While many of the top game developers are now powered solely by greed, there are still a few who go against the grain and care about the quality of their product. Masterpieces like Baldur's Gate, Elden Ring, 
and God of War have proven time and time again that you can make an amazing and financially successful game without bloating it with meaningless content and a heap of microtransactions. And yes, I know what you're thinking. If you don't like microtransactions, then don't buy them. And you know what? You're right. You don't have to spend money on skins or items to enjoy playing the game. But that's not the problem. The issue is that these games are being released as unfinished products just so they have more time to sell cosmetics, which means that even people who don't contribute to the problem have to suffer. The only way to stop the gritty bullshit is to stop giving them our money, which isn't going to happen anytime soon. And it can be all traced back to this. A small, revolutionary change to an already profitable system that took a fun battle royale game to the stratosphere. Thanks to some funny dances and cool looking skins. If you hate what video games have become, you can blame the Fortnite Battle Pass. Fuck you!